Good evening, everyone. This is Gary Bennett. Welcome to Objective C for Absolute Beginners. Tonight we'll be covering Chapter 9 and talking about comparing data in my book, Objective C for Absolute Beginners. Uh, for those of you that are attending live via GoToWebinar, if you can hear my voice and see my screen to make sure I got everything configured correctly in GoToWebinar, please raise your hand in the GoToWebinar control panel. Great. All right. So tonight, we're going to be talking about chapter nine in my book, um, Comparing Data, and um, which is one of my favorite chapters because it's kind of the heart and soul of decision making and how we do things in our application. It's pretty hard to write an application, uh, an iPhone or an iPad application, without comparing information one way or another. Um, for those of you that are also listening to the uh, recorded YouTubes on this, to get all of them, just go to my um, website, excelme.com, click on the free videos, and here's all the uh, past um, recordings here that you can access uh, through the GoToWebinar, uh, I'm sorry, through the YouTube um, channel, and um, also what's coming up. I'll have April's posted here uh, by the end of the month, so you can see what's going on in April. Most every Wednesday night at this time, I do these. If you'd like to attend live, just click on the uh, webinar link here and that will take you to the webinar and then um, on how to do it live. Um, and then also click on the YouTube channel and you can um, see all the postings. And if you subscribe to my channel, you get notified through email. I don't have access to your email address, but you'll get notified via YouTube whenever I upload a new video. And then for those of you that are interested, also click on the courses and you can see the courses that I go in much more um, in depth on every subject. There's typically eight classes per course. They're an hour long and very reasonably priced. And so anyway, I just want to cover that uh, shameless self-promotion, uh, but it does enable me to do these free videos. So anyway, let's go ahead and talk about comparing data. And of course, those of you that are attending live, you can ask questions at the end after I stop the recording, and I'll be happy to answer any of your development questions from the book or anything else that you're working on. I'll be able to help you. Just type it in the question box in the GoToWebinar control panel. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about control um, comparing data. So. Here I've uh, basically, I've initialized um, and declared uh, three integers, A, B, and C, and two string objects, okay? And assigned uh, the string one to excelme.com string and string two to objective C. All right, so here I have an if statement. An if statement is a um, very common way to compare data. Um, we, in the first part of the if statement, if the comparison is true, it does what immediately follows. If it is false, it goes to the else part and does not do what's in the true. It will do everything in the brackets in our else. All right. Or if there is no else, because the else is optional, if it's true, it does it and then hops out. If it's false, it just hops out of it and goes on to the next line of execution. Here I have a compound if statement, meaning that I am comparing, I'm doing two comparisons. The first comparison here, I'm, this is just a single um, non-compounded if statement, just I'm comparing is A greater than B. A is 5. B is 6, so A is not greater than B. But here I compounded it with an AND statement. So this is saying A is greater than B and if A is less than C. In order for the true statement to occur, both, all the conditions here must evaluate to true. If it was an OR, like that, then only one has to be true. For this whole thing to be true okay so anyway I talk in the book I go into the book in true statements and in my courses about um, truth tables and the different options here I'm just kind of summarizing here based on the time for YouTube on on how we can do that so here is um, a common way to do a comparison we also have other ways that we can do comparisons we do comparisons with our for loops and we can do comparisons with a while loop where we can do, you know, while, oops, 
sorry about that. Um, a is greater than B. And then while that is true, it will do everything in this loop. Oops, got it, fat fingering here. So it will do this while loop here until this is no longer true. Assuming it got in here for the um, to begin with, it, with a true statement. In this case, A is not greater than B, so it would not even go into this. I would have to do something like this. And then it would go in. Okay. And you want to make sure you have a way out. Um, in this case, we're incrementing B, and it will always be true, and um, it will never come out of that loop. Just uh, call it an infinite loop. We talk about that in the book as well. All right. The next thing that I have time for that I want to talk about is how to compare objects. This is how we compare real easy, how we can compare with inequality signs or equal signs. That's how you check to see if two values are equal is the double equal sign. Otherwise, we're doing an assignment and that will typically give us a warning saying, do you really want to assign a value in an if statement as, a compo as compared to comparing data? If you want to compare objects like these two objects, these two objects are strings, they're pointers. We use methods to do this. Please, this is the most important part of tonight's discussion. So hopefully you get this because I get this mistake all the time when students want to compare strings, when they want to compare objects. They'll do something like this. Is string one equal to string two? Let me get rid of these brackets here. And that is comparing the pointers. Remember, these are pointers to objects. That's what that little asterisk is, a pointer. You're comparing memory locations here. It's saying, hey, is the memory location for string one equal to string two? Equal to those memory locations. And it may or may not be. It probably is not going to be. But you'll get inconsistent results. Remember, this is comparing pointer memory locations when you do this. If you want to compare objects, you need a method to do that. And with strings, which is one of the most common things that we're going to do, um, is equal to string. We use the is equal to string method, and that will tell us if these strings are equal. So let's go ahead and compile and run this application. And you can see I get a, two falses here. I got a false on this guy here because A is um, not equal to B and A is less than C. But remember for ands, these both have to be true and that's why I got a false. And string one is not equal to, these two strings are not equal. But if I did this, actually, you know what? Let's just um, copy this here. Okay, these two strings now should be equal, and if I copy everything right, I'll get a true, which I did, because they are equal. So remember, never, ever, ever do this. Please, please promise me tonight, you will never compare objects like strings with double equals, okay? Because you will never, ever, probably ever want to do anything like that. You'll want to use the method to compare objects. So anyway, here tonight was just kind of a quick run through on comparing data from chapter nine. If you have any questions or attending live, please um, hang on after I stop the recording and I'll answer your questions live. And for those that, of you that are listening to the YouTube channel, if you'd like to attend live, I just showed you at the beginning how to do that and or shoot me an email anytime. Thanks for attending tonight and I look forward to seeing you next uh, Wednesday night at the same time, 630 Pacific time. Um, for covering chapter 10. Thanks everybody. Good night.